sometimes uh, frustrating to be in Congress because you're in the wheelhouse of the ship of state, but you don't necessarily have your hand on the wheel. Um, and in fact, there's nobody, no single person who has their hand on the wheel. And, and you know, you might think it's the Speaker or the Senate Majority Leader. They've got a piece of the wheel, but then there are really dozens of other people who also have their hands on the wheel, and they are pushing and pulling in various directions. What are we getting for our buck sending you to Washington yeah. and not representing I want illegal immigrants out of this country now. What are you doing, and what can I do to accomplish that? One of the concerns I have is, is with government is why is our government uh, only minimally investing in renewable energy solutions um, while we're investing and in supporting billions into oil, gas, and, uh, and great people want action, and we need uh, we, we we need to get action. One of the challenges is that uh, government is inherently slow. Part of that's by design. We don't like it, but it's in part because it's made by sign. Uh, founding fathers really didn't want it to be quick. Uh, and it's a very inefficient system if you think about it. I mean, having a house, and then the Senate, and then a president, and then a court system, it's, all, it's pretty inefficient because it would be a lot faster and more efficient just to have one person just making all those decisions. But of course, it's exactly what we don't want. It's a wonderful system. But it does get frustrating, not just to members of Congress, but to, certainly to people watching it. And um, I think what's made it even more frustrating here lately is that you get what you want, and we're sort of conditioned to that, which is a great thing in marketing. If you go into a grocery store, you can get any kind of orange juice you want. You can get it with some pulp, no pulp, lots of pulp. You can get it this way, that way, or you can go to a coffee shop and you can get exactly the kind of coffee that you want with the, just the kind of sprinkle you want on top. And that could be your order. And then along comes government and it doesn't deliver exactly what I want. You might end up walking out with a glass of uh, lukewarm milk, but the reason is it's, it's a great big country. And um, there are some districts in this country that are so different than the wonderful upstate of South Carolina. I mean, I feel very comfortable in the upstate of South Carolina. Um, and I would feel pretty uncomfortable politically in a lot of districts that some of my colleagues represent. Part of the fun of having elected officials is uh, being able to fuss at them from time to time. We'll impeach. I don't know. You know how they talk. <laughs> One way and then another. Who knows? I don't, uh, I don't listen to politicians too much. <laughs> well, I bitch about it all day. Maybe I should come and show up and maybe say something. Um, you know, uh, no avail. To no avail. I, I want to let him know that I have a, an opinion. I want him to know about it. And he's going to be my representative for, until the next election, at least. The government is here to serve us. No one served me yet. The thing that frustrates me, and this is what I've, I've written him a bunch of letters and talked to him about this before, uh, figuring out how to use energy and how to develop things and how to design automobiles, none of that is a function of the government at any level. A lot of people say, you know, uh, uh, it, that uh, it's cheap theater. <laughs> Politics is cheap theater. Sorting through who's um, who, who's a vocal minority and where's the main body of the district. Wherever people come together, issues and men are discussed and argued about. Some feel that this isn't altogether a good thing, that a lot of time and energy are wasted this way. It may be, but that's the way Americans like to do it. They like to feel everybody has a right to speak and is interested enough to do it. Yeah, that's a challenge because the vocal minority is always going to be heard. Whether they're on the left or on the right, they're always going to be heard. Then there's a 
whole group of people out there that not necessarily in the middle, because it's not as though they're mentally. It's rather that they're involved in the community. Um, and uh, politics and policy is just a piece of what they do um, in a broader life. And door to door is the best way to find out what most people are thinking. Bobby, yes, good to see you. Thing though, uh, Bobby, Eric Lawson. Good to see you. Is the operating room? Yeah. Those are going to be nice. Um, so, one of the challenges is making sure that you're hearing from those folks and not just hearing from the highly motivated um, vocal minority. You know, that's the great thing about the 4th District. I mean, it's, a, it's a great district um, because people here um, generally believe in family and you know, uh, faith and want the government out of their lives as much as possible. Washington and Jefferson and Lincoln knew the job would have to be finished by those who lived after them. And they knew that this democracy would last only as long as its citizens were willing to keep working on it. It's our government. From here on, it's up to us.